Many of the knots you already know are just one step away from becoming something else. Like this overhand knot. You can take the folded arms portion, break it open, give yourself some room, then we'll just flip it over and we'll place our barrel right in between. And now we have a barrel sling. To make it a little more secure, we can leave our initial sling around the bottom, then take our cord and wrap it clockwise, take it and tuck it under itself on either side. And now it's that much more stable. For example, you might use this at an outdoor hand washing station. When we make our overhand knot, we take one end and fold it over the other. But what if before we did this, we place an object through that loop we created? Let's take our marlin spike and we'll place it through. And now we get what's called a marlin spike hitch. This is a hitch that works great to add a handle to anything you're pulling tension on. I used a marlin spike hitch and a hammer to help hoist this pressure washer in my truck. We started to set up our overhand knot and we created a window and placed our marlin spike through and created that marlin spike hitch. But what if instead of placing a marlin spike hitch through, we took one end of the rope and we threaded it through the other side. Watch what happens when we let it spill. We create a bowline. And so that's what this video is about. Realizing you can take a knot and make just a small change to turn it into something else. Let's take a look at another common knot. We'll take our fingers, pinch around, and create a girth hitch or lark's foot. If you have a stuck oil filter, a lark's foot will make short work of it. Just take another wrench, place it through the loop, and start wrapping it up. You'll take another wrench and you'll place it at the box end for torque. And once you get it tight enough, the filter will break free. There it goes. Holy cow. That one was not easy, how this? Mm -mm. If you want to turn this large head tool into something else, instead of running an oil filter through it, let's run some paracord through. That'll give us this cool flower petal design. To continue our flower pattern, we'll take our orange cord and form in a lark's head. Then we'll take our blue cord and thread it through both loops. I'll hold on to my bracelet and my blue cord so that I can pull out the slack. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Form in a lark's head, thread my blue cord through. Hold on to my bracelet and my cord so that I can pull out the slack. Okay. From here, we'll overlap our blue strands in the front. Now I have a window on each side. I'll take the right orange cord, thread it through that window. The left orange cord will go through its own window. Now we just have to pull everything snug. And now you get an idea of how this pattern is pulled together. I didn't come up with this myself. I'd like to give credit where it's due. I originally saw this on Instagram through TextTube. Let's take a look at a slip knot. I want my standing portion to be encircled, so I'll take my right hand side, I'll roll it over, roll it over again to create that window, and then pull that standing portion through. Now, did you know that you could take this upper part, give yourself a little bit of slack, I'll twist it clockwise, and then feed this loop through. And watch what happens. I get the beginnings of a scaffold knot. Now, if I wanna reinforce that, I can do that same thing again. I'll just pull this up, Give it a clockwise turn, feed that loop through, and check this out. Look how nice that looks. This is often used in tool safety. For example, if you're like my brother-in-law, climbing up wind towers. This might help keep your wrench from falling onto someone's head. If you want to tie off a wrench using that same method, we'd go through the box end first and leave ourselves plenty of room. I'll take my working end and I'll throw it over the top of my sanding end. And then I'll come back around and complete our overhand knot. Now we have our slip knot. All that's left to do is to take this upper portion of that knot. We're going to pull out some slack, give it a twist, and throw it over the wrench. So let's do that. Pull this out. 
and give it a twist, throw it over the wrench, let's dress everything up, and you can see our knot is taking shape. If we want to reinforce that, we can do the same thing again. I'll just pull in some slack. I'll give it a twist and throw it back over. And now we have our scaffold hitch. To create our slip knot, we made a loop and we pulled our standing end through. Now what if we continued to do that? With every loop that we made, we kept pulling our standing portion through. What we end up with is a daisy chain. We could take our rope and find the midpoint. Here's our loop. Go over the standing part and pull it through and just keep on doing that. And you may recognize this as something we use to stay organized. I'll leave you with this. Keep in mind the motions we use to make one knot can turn another knot into something else. So here we have our overhand knot. I'm going to take my fingers and pinch them through as if I were creating a girth hitch or a lark's head. And then I'll pull this tight. And now we have a modified version of a girth hitch, except for we have it tied off in the middle. Or let's say we take our overhand knot and we pull out the ears and then we do that same motion. What could this be used for? You could even create an overhand knot, pull out the ears, and form a lark's head on either side. This is what it ends up looking like. Maybe it has a use, maybe it doesn't. There's only one way to find out.